Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our 11 days of global unity celebrating our 15th anniversary. And today is the women's theme. I'm Karen Palmer. I am the mindful media mom and Miss Kindness on all social media. And we are here talking with the people who are literally the kindness women leaders in our beautiful, beautiful world. I mean, this woman that we are going to be talking with has really been walking the talk. And Dr. Nancy Gales is here to talk to us about how we can grow more kindness and unity in each community and how we can really lead with our heart so that we have a world that works for all of us. So thank you, Nancy, for being here. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. This is an amazing, epic event. Oh, I'm so grateful that you could be here, Nancy. Can you tell a little background, a little work that the, the work that you've been doing in the health industry and um, all the things that you're excited about for, for what you're working on right now? We have time for all those things. <laughs> well, I've actually been in this field for 40 years, so I have a lot I could talk about. Um, and, and that has been the evolution and the growth of um, healthcare from medicine, um, organized medicine as we knew it, I would say, to alternative healthcare and then into what uh, we're now calling compassionate healthcare. And my work with the Charter for Compassion has brought me even to become more deeply involved in that. My um, issue, my, my specialization uh, has mostly been with women and children. Um, and I always say women and children first and every man for himself. But by that, I mean, uh, the women do always bring the men into healthcare. Um, and so they're not usually the first ones to access it. So what we're doing now is talking about what does compassionate healthcare mean? in organized medicine and in what we call self-care because we do have the ability now, and we always did, um, to care for ourselves in meaningful ways, in preventive ways and in curative ways. And believe it or not, miss kindness, it starts with kindness. <laughs> And, you know, as a hands-on healer, I began my practice as a chiropractor and just the touch, right? Just the touch. And then the listening, it's kind, just be kind and give them a place to begin to heal, uh, a safe place to uh, talk about whatever it is. And, and this is where we begin. And so that's it. I love your sign, kindness changes everything. And it really does. Um, and so that's the work I continue to do. I'm not a, doing chiropractic now because the box was a little bit too small for me as I wanted to expand into, you know, when you have a professional license, you have to do certain things according to standard. Um, and so I wanted to expand more. I'm an ordained interfaith minister as well. So to bring kindness and compassion into healthcare is a spiritual act, really, a spiritual activist type of uh, methodology. And so I wanted to bring that all in. So that's what I'm doing and working uh, with policy um, in the federal government and on a state and local level, trying to educate our legislators about uh, compassion. That's my hardest challenge. <laughs> it's really my hardest challenge, but um, starting very local in my community hoping to develop uh, Rockaway, my community as a city of compassion with the charter. So I'm going slow, going slow with that. It, it's, it, it's an upward uh, um, slope, but uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing, I guess. That's about summary of it. That's awesome. And you know, we, when we had our health summit with um, James Maskell and Catherine Davis, they spoke about um, functional health care. And they spoke about how we can have community health care. Um, and they're really doing some amazing, amazing work in helping to really unite people in communities so that there's, you know, more of a wellness care than a sickness care. <laughs> you, kept that saying that. you kept saying that. We, yeah, we have a sickness care system. We don't have a wellness care system. Well, because we're not empowered to uh, access our own strength or our own wisdom 
our inner wisdom, the connecting with the wisdom of our bodies, you know, mindfulness, mindfulness meditation, the MBSR work, mindfulness-based stress reduction that John Cabot zinn started, you know, as a secular approach, really opened the eyes of organized medicine to allow this to be there. It wasn't religious-based. It was simply breathing, doing would body. You like to lead us in that while we're while we're here on the on the call, would you like to lead us in that? We've been I've been asking our leaders to um, to help our audience to be more calm, to be more connected. To so I would love to to have that visceral experience with you. It has to be embodied understanding so that you can understand what your the language of your body. I do have a. Talk, which talks about the power of self-care. And the idea is we do have a language, our body speaks. That's why we have a body, so it can express what we're feeling. And then when we are trained to understand that, we're able to communicate with our uh, healthcare advisors uh, on what's happening. So I'll tell you how I begin. I always begin with the breath. And so if you take a position where your feet are grounded, connecting your body to the earth energy, Mother Earth. This is a women's day, so we'll contact our women archetypes. And then, Thich Nhat Hanh calls it the mindfulness bell, the call to remember, to ground yourself and to come back to the self that knows. So you actually remember, bring all the member organizations in your body back into understanding of the wisdom of one, of oneness, of unity. No body part works on its own. All body parts work together for the greater good of the whole, for thriving, for enjoyment of life and for accessing your individual purpose. And the way you know that you are doing that is by listening to your inner vibration. And so you can begin by quieting, settling your glitter, as I say, let all the thoughts that are floating around in your mind and all the energy in your body that might be manifesting as tension or constriction or pain. And just breathe in and imagine it settling like glitter in a snow globe at your feet. And the longer the exhale, the more you engage your vagus nerve, your nerve of nobility, grace under pressure. And so breathe in again and just allow the whole body to fill. You're going to feel your rib cage rise. It will expand. Your collarbones will move up. Keep drawing in the breath. And then... Pull your belly in and exhale the longer, longer on the exhale than the inhale to engage that parasympathetic system. It brings down the fight or flight response, your hyper sympathetic activity, which is the channel we're often on. And just allow that flow until you feel that rippling, resonating, cyclic, wonderful feeling of taking in that breath. Ah, oh, it feels so good to just breathe fully and let it go fully. Until you become secure and knowing that the next breath will follow filled with everything you need to know. Little quantum packets of energy, of wisdom come in with every breath. It's known in all religion, the prana, the ruha, the kucha, the Holy Spirit, the chi energy, the mana from heaven. And so allow that in and accept it and let it inform every cell in your body.
And once you feel that nice, even flow of breath, it's like you're on cruise control in your car. No need to hit the gas or hit the brake. You're just cruising. And that is your vibrational frequency. That's where you, your set point. That's where you return to. And the more you do it, the more you facilitate that channel. So all you have to do is begin and hit the enter button and you'll go right there. That makes perfect sense. We'll just close this. I loved that. Thank you so much. That makes perfect sense. And I, we, you know, I love that you're bringing that into our, our self-care and, and um, let's talk a little bit about self-care and how people can make that more of a priority. Okay. So how the power of self-care is the name of my TED talk and my book. Um, and, and really the first way that you do it is by allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to do it. We do come from a culture where we have um, hierarchical and organized uh, licensure type of professions where we begin to think that only they can do it, right? And really- on Amazon too? It, it's on Amazon, yeah. Okay. You can go to my website, uh, drnancygales.com. Okay. Dr. Nancygales.com. So I think it, not I think I know, and that has been my business, is empowerment because we can so know. You know, people would come in to me, particularly mothers with their baby. Oh, the, you know, the doctor said they have this, but I don't think it's that. And I would say, what do you think it is? Well, I think it's, you know, sheepishly, I think it's something else. That's what it is. Trust yourself, you're the mother. Mothers are the original doctors. They are the original primary care physicians. And we've always been that. And we do know what to do. Do you need professional help at times? Absolutely, just like anything else. But the idea to trust your own intuitive wisdom. Women have, of course, as I like to say, a wider corpus callosum. Do you know the two parts of your brain? And in between, there's a band. And then you get transmission back and forth. Well, women happen to have a wider corpus callosum than men. They're able to facilitate that exchange more easily. And so we do have a bit of a different way of being and thinking and intuiting that is particular to uh, the divine feminine, as I like to say. And so we need to remember that or even know that or be aware of it, or if you didn't ever know it, we do have that <laughs> ability. So that is what the breath takes us to, to just stop and calm down. We often tend to act out of panic, right? Fear, everything is crisis. Oh my God, what is this? Uh, you know, and, and uh, oh, so the patient will call me. I need to see you right now. I have, okay, how long have you had? Oh, 20 years. Okay, <laughs> 20 years ago, you could have called. <laughs> But we, we tend to wait till there's a crisis because that is how we're taught. So I think the idea- I also notice that people tend to find that somebody else, they want to kind of scapegoat somebody else when they don't feel happy inside themselves and they don't want to um, own their own responsibility of their own happiness, that they want to project it out. What would you say to somebody who is working through that on the receiving end that has been told that they caused somebody's misery? Right, because externalization of values and feelings and characteristics are, again, these are learned in our culture. This is learned. You have to look at what... Uh, our media tells us what advertising tells us. You're supposed to look like that, be like this, do this. So much is based on external values that someone else has made for us that we don't know our own. We don't know our own values. So when someone says just, you're like, you're on rocky ground, you know, the uh, Three Little Pigs book, okay? Did you have the house built of brick? I'm strong, <laughs> or, you know, it's going to blow down. You have to have a house built, but you have to know who you are. And so another thing I, I do say in my book and in my life and to every 
one of my patients is what makes you tick and what makes you sick? You have to know you. And the way that you know you come home to yourself is through this practice of breathing. That's the only way you know, because once you get your channel, once you get your station, you know that's your vibe. You know, when you're driving along and the radio's going, you hit a next town and it goes out, you can't get the channel on, right? Before you get out of town, before you get out of your range, return to your highlighted route. Go back to your inner GPS and remember who you are. You have to become conversant with, with who you are. What do I feel? Does that make me feel? You know, one thing I'll always do is mirror back to my children or my patients is, how does that make you feel? If it feels right, it's right. If it feels wrong, it's wrong. And then you have to go in and self-assess. These are educational um, techniques, strategies. You have to learn them. They're learned behaviors and learned strategies of how to be successful. Because at the end of the day, if it's gonna be, it's gonna be because of me, right? And if we can stand on our own solid ground, then we, uh, we know that what is external, what are they telling us isn't right. And if, you know, it, it's just learning how to trust yourself. How would you suggest somebody starts with doing that to trust themselves if they are maybe a little wobbly on that? Well, there's different sectors, what I call investment strategies. There's different sectors. So there's your uh, personal life, your individual life, uh, what makes you happy. And usually that's either, it can be in your career, and I hope it is also a piece of that, but it doesn't have to be, or in your work life or in your relationship. So you look to where am I successful? Where have I been successful? Not meaning money successful, but where have I been successful that I have created a goal and achieved it, where I have done something that made me a happier person, done something that made someone else happier. How have I been successful and in what area? What are my strengths? And then build on your strengths. Go where you've been successful before, do that again, and then take that same strategy into another sector. I love that. So we, we're here today and we are part of the We the World campaign that is celebrating the 11 days of global unity. This is our 15th anniversary. And the big question we're asking is, what can we do together that we can't do on our own? And I'd like to just kind of explore that with you, with any of your collaboration ideas, any of the um, organizations that you're working with that you'd like to give a shout out to, or anything that you'd just like to share in how we collaborate and co-create. Yeah, so there's different sectors I'm working on in my community. You know, the Buddha said the next Sangha will probably be the community, and that's true. And so um, as an ordained interfaith minister, I do have a song. What is a Sangha? A Sangha is, yeah. it, it, it is a, yeah, an independent church. And it is a church that is not, it used to be from the Buddhist tradition that it was where the monks gathered, but it is uh, secular now. And um, it is non-religious in that sense. It's non-denominational. It's an interfaith, interspiritual a congregation That's of beautiful. people of like-minded pursuit and we uh, meditate and pray together and work together. So um, collectivity, collective consciousness in that environment, I'm a prayerful person and I believe in the power of prayer and the transmission of those intentions on another um, antenna frequency that is really important. Um, so uh, we work with that uh, on a weekly basis. And I'm working in the school system here. So I started doing the compassionate integrity uh, training and the, uh, for the teachers in the school here. And then I did some 11th grade classes and some ninth grade classes teaching them what is compassion, what is integrity, and how do we work in a group with that, a non-competitive, you know, strengthening cooperation, Coopetition, they call it coopetition, yeah. uh, and that's fun, and I love that, and I, I love energizing the young people. So I've taken on some interns. We're doing that. 
Um, in the compassionate healthcare world, I'm working on uh, policy work uh, with the um, uh, Integrative Healthcare Policy uh, Consortium. And we're working in teams in a consortium of every different discipline in the same way that you do it with religions, right? Or in the same way that you would do it with uh, relationships, communities, everybody's different. So who believes acupuncture is the only way? Who believes uh, Judaism is the only way? Who, right? It's none of that. Yeah. It's called person-centered healthcare. And it means what do you need individually? And what so, is for you? Great. Yeah. So that's trying that's to a, legislate that. Yeah. And that's a very, very, very big hurdle because of course it's, you know, the, the Congress is about 5,000 years behind us all. <laughs> and we talk about fighting and not being cooperative or looking at another person's point of view at all. That's them. Uh, so that's a hard one. But that that's where I think that Again, once you start with a small group of people, it starts to build out whether the timing, we don't know, but here's a perfect example of people like you having 15 years of doing this. We don't know when it's gonna hit, right? We don't know when the, the, the shift is gonna, the tipping point is going to take place where all of a sudden the tide turns and yes, you got it, right? Do you know the story of the hundredth monkey? I don't think so. There's, you know, the monkey starts to take the coconut and they don't know how to really open it. And then finally one just starts to crack it and oh, they throw it and they realize they can eat. It. And then all over in different parts of the world, all monkeys are doing that at the same time. But they never saw, you know, they never were connected with each other. It's like that uh, mirror neuron type of thing. It just happens. So I believe in that. I, I know it happens. I don't just believe it. I've seen it happen so i know it happens and we all know that didn't you ever think of somebody and they call you mm -hmm. oh i'm just thinking of you yeah that's why so it does happen and it's not just a one-off but we can actually uh maximize that potential recognize it and then build on it. and that's what you're doing um and so i you know I, I just think that's the way that we do it intentionally and with uh, eyes wide open focus enough yeah. Of us, yeah enough of us believe it's possible we'll see peace on earth and we'll see we'll see we saw kindness go viral i i mean i watched it happen and and now i can see that there's so many more people on board that were you know all, always around they just needed some more ways to amplify the work that they were doing. They have been, I mean, we've all been in this for 20 years, you know? Um, and so now we have the technology, technology to really amplify each other's work and cross promote each other and help to, you know, bring more awareness to the problems that are we're facing and not just the problems, but offering real solutions to those and not just being a flashlight, but being a lighthouse connected to source, connected to our center and being that center. So if we can um, stave off the powers that be that are trying to keep you away from doing that, right? And that's where we've got to everything. Keep everything's trying to distract us. Yeah. yeah. Everything, everything. Healthcare, they're doing that with the you know, force mandated um, procedures. And, and, you know, it, it, it's, uh, yeah, they're still trying to disempower you. And that's we can't bad. live in it. Yeah, it's we can't just live in Just the fact of, you know, it's a type of a, of a human condition that um, in itself is a type of disease. Uh huh. So I, but I do believe that it is coming around. I see a glimmer, you're a glimmer. What you're doing is amazing and you really are Miss Kindness. And of course that beautiful face is so kind and adorable. You can't help but do the same thing once you, it's a radiant uh, effect and you know how that is. One catchy, it's contagious, right? Contagious. So that's the kind of other disease contagion we want to do. If one can be that way, so can another. It's just a matter of which Energy. Well, that was how it all started for me, Nancy, was, you know, I started doing global meditations back in 2014 when I read Dr. David Hawkins' book, Power Versus Force. Oh. And I saw that one person who could vibrate with love in their heart, with peace on their mind, with kindness in their actions, 
would counterbalance 750,000 people who are in the low vibration of shame and blame and bigotry. So I got online and I just started and, you know, it started with 10 people. I tell people all the time, you know, everyone starts with one follower. Everyone starts with one person who resonates with what you have to say. Don't worry about the numbers. The numbers will come if you're speaking your truth. The, num the people will show up. The people who need to hear your message will be in alignment with that message. They'll find you. You'll find each other. And um, how do they find you, Nancy, if they want to connect with you the best ways to yeah, support? Go right on to uh, my website, www.drnancygalesgales.com. And I'm there. And um, Cute. I think I spelled it wrong. Let me spell it right. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's on my caption here, I believe, but it's, uh, it's yes. H L E S the silent H Nancy Gales, uh, D R Nancy Gales.com. Yeah. And you know what? Don't be worried if it's only one or two or three people. I've had this so many times where only a couple people show up or, and, and I'm not the only one I know in, in presentations that I do and talks that I do, or I look at politicians that they, they have you know, 20 people in the room and they're running for president. I mean, you know, it, don't worry if it's only a few people that you're talking to, if it's only a mother's group or, or a kid or a PTA, it doesn't matter. And opening and it's opening more. It's like, it's opening more lines of communication too you know that's the excite that's the exciting part of you know like Marianne Williamson running for president is is a wonderful experience for us as women you know to be able to see a conscious loving supportive kind leader that is still in the running still going she's you know she I just said the concept she presented was love will beat fear. I mean, did you ever hear that on a stage of any kind of organization? Never. And she's also said that Donald Trump is a phenomenon and we need another phenomenon to come in. And she is that phenomenon. She, she is calling, she is embodying that experience. And it's incredible watching the whole experience happening. And, and just so many incredible kindness leaders coming out with their voice, you know, and, and not backing down, you know, like Greta, you know, Thunberg, she is, um, has Asperger's, but she is on there and she's using Asperger's as her superpower for the climate change. Um, and they're doing climate strikes and she, you know, they have um, Friday, Fridays for our future. And there, we had a beautiful, beautiful um, girl who was speaking on our children and youth. Um, that was um, Jamie Margulon, Margulon. And she is the founder of thisiszerohour.org. And uh, she is a very incredible, uh, you know, organizer. And that's what we need right now is organization for the people who have something important to share so that we can really start talking about these solutions. So there's a principle in healing called order, disorder, reorder or organization, disorganization and reorganization. And in natural health, what happens is cells build up, they break down, they die. There's always order, then disorganization and then reorganizing. And in the reorganization, something different comes, something new, something more alive, something with more vitality. Even when you're building up scar tissue, it's stronger, it's more stable in many, in many situations. And so I think what I'm seeing is the rise of the divine feminine. What you're talking about is a lot more women on the scene. A lot more women are now being listened to. And not only are they being listened to, they're starting to assert their value and, hey, don't mess with me regarding the Me Too movement. And we can't be uh, suppressed and abused and shut up and no more. And so that is a reorganization of another kind that we haven't seen before. Yeah, it's incredible. These are some beautiful times that we're living in. And you know, I think we're all having our own human challenges that are helping us to really transmute 
the illusion of the separateness and the illusion of, you know, what's in it for me to what's in it for we, you know, we have the three eyes. So we have to inspire, inform and involve. And that's how we go from a me, what's in it for me society to what's in it for we society. And that's what we're doing here, Nancy. So thank you so much for being here. And thank you everyone who's watching and please share this out, share it to your timeline, share it to your groups, share it to all the pages that you manage. And um, you can share it, you know, you can go in and you can get the link and you can share it in your newsletter. You can, I mean, it's just incredible what we can do now with technology. We are really the media that we have been waiting for. And, um, and it's really exciting because this is- that Your highest consciousness is the higher technology also. That's the beauty of it all. Really? You yeah, awesome. Thank you. For, thank you, really. All blessings, may awesome. all free persons be free and happy. And let's all keep joining together. I can't thank you enough. Miss Kindness, you're the best. Thank you so much. And remember, everybody, do something kind every day. We're going to end here. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you so much.